வங்கியிலிருந்து அதி கூடிய வட்டியினை தரும் அருணரு சர்வர் சேமிப்பு கணக்கு ஆட்கடத்தல் கார்களின் பொய்களை நம்ப வேண்டாம் அதிகமான இளைஞர்கள் மீண்டும் திருப்பி அனுப்பப்பட்டுள்ளனர் தொழில் வாய்ப்பும் இல்லை அவுஸ்திரேலியாவுக்கு படகில் போக வேண்டாம் அவுஸ்திரேலிய அரசாங்கம் விடுக்கும் செய்தி விளக்கு ஆலோசனை வழங்கக்கூடிய புதிய காப்புறுதி நிபுணர்கள் You're watching Rise and Shine. We hope you enjoyed the little fitness segment and we hope you're a little fit now. So don't try bodging into a fridge now and try to stuff yourself up uh, right after whatever the fitness segment that you enjoyed or whatever you did because we know that after every segment, the first thing that people do is what's there for me to eat? <laughs> the kind of thing. Not the thing that I would do, but the thing that person would do. Right, moving on to our next segment. This is where we bring along a guest and we have a little informal chat with him. And this time around, we have Chatra De Silva who is joining us from the Sri Lanka Youth Organization. Yes, Thank yes. you very much and good morning to you. Thank good you morning. for joining us. Thank you. Um, Chatra, we'll do a quick background about yourself and then we'll get on to the details about uh, the Sri Lanka Youth Organization. Thank you. So my name is Chatur De Silva and uh, I came from the United States. I'm the Public Relations Director of uh, Sri Lankan Youth Organization. And just a little bit about the organization. It was actually founded by my sister um, in the States, actually in our living room. And uh, we came up with the mission statement, which was to bring together our youth to inspire them and create leaderships in Sri Lanka. So pretty much the main goal of this, uh, this organization was to kind of create a home away from home. Um, we have so many Sri Lankans traveling from uh, Sri Lanka and coming to the States and they're thrown into a culture where there's not many Sri Lankans around them. And the main focus of Sri Lankan Youth Organization is to kind of bring all the Sri, Lank Sri Lankans together and to remind them where they come from. And if we speak about the states in America, mm -hmm. you know, despite the Sri Lanka Youth Organization teaming up the whole setup there, uh, before we go into the whole mission and statement of what you do, mm -hmm. um, America is a very widespread state. Correct. We know the number of states involved. And Sri Lankans are going there maybe for studies, maybe for the green card purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, we see them split. And how do you control that? Or how do you come about uh, keeping in touch with them? So the beautiful thing is, uh, over, over these past couple of years, what I've learned is people don't follow you for what you do. They follow you for why you do it. Mm -hmm. And with that purpose, we've kind of learned that in, we started a chapter in Northern California. We've also started a chapter in New York. And just recently, we started a chapter in the UK. So everything is spreading like wildfire. And I think people are really understanding the main message of this mm -hmm. is really just making a difference and bringing our Sri Lankan youth together. Because uh, we really need to think about the future. And the future is our kids. 
and when they grow up we have to let them know where they come from and who they are so in order when they step into the real world um, they'll just be more prideful and have a passion to do what they do. So the basic idea behind uh, this uh, chatter is like to inform uh, the Sri Lankans who get to the U.S. that okay you're coming from this culture you've been thrown in as you said thrown into a new culture how you adjust accordingly is it? Correct correct so just let them know you know even though we are on the other side of the world we're still there for them if you guys need a lending hand if there's anything that in Sri Lanka that you feel that needs more attention or needs more help that's what we're here for you let us know and we'll do as much as we can to make that happen for you guys and your name goes as Sri Lanka youth organization are we focusing only like the very teenagers students studying um, migrants or are we looking at the very seniority group as well I mean at this point um, if you're Sri Lankan and you could help we'll use it because that's the most important thing I think when we see everyone together it's very inspiring and when people see that more people come and want to join the process mm -hmm. and uh, so far how is your contact base uh, with the Sri Lankan and uh, US states with the number of people who are involved so far well thank God to technology Facebook Instagram all this stuff people are able to firsthand actually see what's going on with SOIO so it makes our job a little more easier mm -hmm. so it's it's the thing about this now I feel like it's, we don't have to go to people to tell them to join. They see what we do and they automatically jump on board. Mm -hmm. All right, coming back to like, so getting back to it, like, so you said your sister was the one who wanted to start this. Or what made you come up with such an organization or such an idea? Um, I think just growing up with the culture, with my family, uh, we're a very strong culture in the United States. And we saw so many Sri Lankans coming to America. And it's not their fault, but they're not surrounded by so many Sri Lankans. So they just get thrown into the uh, American culture. So what we saw is, especially with my sister's two kids, is we want to create a future for them where they're reminded of what they are and where they come from. Mm -hmm. And that was the main goal, the, the main purpose of this organization. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between the two cultures? We understand, we see it over the webcasts or videos or international stories that we hear. But uh, besides that, what's, uh, I know that we come back with a rich heritage of cultures and mm -hmm. rituals and stuff. Um, do we maintain it there as well, or how does it go along? Yeah, I mean, we have various events. We have the Sri Lankan New Year, we have Vesak. Um, we've just started doing a singular teaching on Sundays at the temple. Mm -hmm. So just having that, I mean, a lot of these kids don't grow up that. They don't teach singular there. Mm -hmm. They don't really teach. They teach more about the American history. Mm -hmm. And we're here to just let, just teach them what the Sri Lankan history is and what Sri Lanka is. Mm -hmm. And uh, besides the crowd that has been growing there, um, what is the uh, population? Do we have, see a female audience more or do we see a family-based audience there? Um, there's a huge diaspora, mainly in Northern California. There's a huge uh, children population. So there's at least 70 to 80 children growing up. And I did a visit over there because we had to help them for the New Year's, uh, New Year's Eve. And um, as it hit me as soon as I saw them. I knew that in a couple of 10 years, these kids, they're the future. And as soon as we saw that, that's, that's what every, everyone just started picking up and people started to get inspired to make a difference. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, how has been, uh, like, say, the, uh, like, say, you say, where you're based in uh, the States? Like? We're in Southern California. Mm -hmm. So uh, Southern California in uh, San Fernando Valley, Northridge. And then we also have one in Sacramento. And then uh, we just started one in uh, uh, New York City and UK. Okay. Tell us more details about your organization, uh, the mission and the overall aspect on events. How do you do it? Is there a team uh, involved or does it, do you like sort out uh, your calendar mm -hmm. and based on that, do you work out the events? Yeah, so we have certain events. I mean, uh, the main goal is raising money because this is a nonprofit organization. So recently what we did was we actually had an event called Summer Love Part 2, which was our second annual event. And that event uh, was to, uh, we vowed to build a school over here in Panulathana, Morahena Junior School, which caters to grades one through four. So we vowed to build them a library. And uh, I think the most amazing part is uh, the human impact that complete strangers from one part of the world is able to help another part of strangers in the other part of the world. And we were able to raise $2,500. And our promise is uh, to build a library for these kids and then fill the library up with books. Mm -hmm. And the grand opening for the ceremony is going to take place on uh, July 26th. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when we went and told the teachers to this, who are volunteering to build this library as well, um, they, they started working immediately as soon as we offered this. So it's, it's, it's a great impact. Mm -hmm. 
So apart from the uh, Sri Lankans living in the or getting into the U.S. for studying uh, whatever purpose, like say, how is the response from uh, the U.S. public, like the citizens of U.S. towards this? Has there been any uh, anybody great coming forward to help out, uh, none, not ra rather than a Sri Lankan? Yeah, I mean we've had gotten so much support because what we try to do is we're trying to impact the world and Sri Lankans impacting. We're letting people know that we are here. Um, so we do various events as far as uh, we do homeless feedings over there and we volunteer. We do a lot of charity work. So as far as the Americans, they see what we're doing and they really like the fact that we're giving free help or we're helping the people and the public. And it's not only just Sri Lankans. It's as many people that need help. Mm -hmm. And Chatra, speaking of your background, mm -hmm. uh, were you born in Sri Lanka and uh, been residing in America or were you born there itself? Oh, well, I was born in Sri Lanka and uh, in three months, after th at the age of three months, I went to, uh, I went to the United States. But um, I think what really just motivated me to do this is my culture. Um, what my family did is we brought the culture with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of other people in the States they weren't able to have that because of their surrounding. Most of them were born over there or went to the States at a later age. So what we try to do is uh, incorporate all that together, not really just taking away from the American culture, but putting both together to create a Sri Lankan American. Mm -hmm. So let's say when you have all these out of the activities, mm -hmm. I'm sure the uh, uh, American citizens must be probably wondering, what is this going on yeah. at some point? But I understand that uh, various other country nationalities also must be celebrating like if there are Indians they celebrate oh, the yeah. Indian Independence Day or something so there'll be festivities like Holy Day or something like exactly. that so what is their response when you create an atmosphere and some sort of excitement of uh, like a out of the festival or something well the cool thing is we don't we don't we don't uh, segregate and we don't kick anyone out anyone's anyone that wants to help can help mm -hmm. so we try to do as much as we can, and like I was saying before, if people follow you for not what you do, for why you do it. And I think even South Asian cultures, we have a lot of people who are Indian, and uh, they join as well because they want to they give back as well. Mm -hmm. So do you have a very big team working with you uh, to get all these events and things organized? Yes, we actually have a board of directors, which is very diverse. Uh, uh, we decided to choose, there's a Sinhalese, Tamil, and then the Muslim, to make sure that we know we impact everyone because we got to keep in mind even though there's different types of Sri Lankan we are all Sri Lankan mm -hmm. and so we have the board of directors then we have our committee board and then we have our members and the beautiful thing is everyone comes together to make this possible mm -hmm. that's the amazing thing and just a little bit about our mission statement so pretty much it is to bring our youth together to involve them in leadership uh, leadership networking and inspire them to make a difference in our community as well as create friendships that will last a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, when we come back, we'll speak more about uh, how the board is being created and how people get nominated for it. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about that. For the moment, we'll take a music break.
imagine yourself wearing a mascot suit of an elephant or famous one would be Mickey Mouse and what not? There's a lot. Uh, like, yeah, there's a lot. We, we, we see on when, whenever we go to a carnival or something and the first thing we do is, oh God, look at there's a mascot coming, let's avoid him, let's <laughs> avoid him. But then there are those screaming children saying, mommy, I want to see. I want to take pictures. I with want you. to take pictures <laughs> with him. And then a person like me who has a lot of sarcasm wants to go and punch the mascot <laughs> without appreciating the effort of how much he would die underneath those clothes. <laughs> However, uh, if you do see a mascot, just show some love and you know give a flank kiss if you have to. We're back on the show with Chatra Deserva, who is with us uh, from you. the Sri Lanka Youth Organization, and we're going to speak more uh, about. Uh, how the formation is done, uh, okay. how, did, how was it at the whole inception of the process? I understand that your sister started it. Correct. But um, based on the number of people who are there in the board now, mm. how did that come about? So pretty much uh, there's always a beginning. Um, so what happened with this was we start together in, in my sister's living room and uh, we knew a couple of Sri Lankans that actually lived there in the United States. So we gave him all a phone call and we pitched the idea to him, tell him, you know what, there's no organization in the United States that's actually wanting to do this. So how about we all get together and actually be the first ones? And uh, at first it didn't seem like it was possible. And uh, the amazing thing is someone told me it was uh, Anshad Lian to captain of Sri Lankan Airlines, my cousin. He told me that uh, let's work hard and accomplish what other people call impossible. And that's the line that we live by. And a lot of people looked at us and said, you know what, this possibly can't happen. But two years later, here we are giving back to Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the main focus. What it, was the main struggle uh, for you to come about? Uh, I understand every foundation at the start, it's like really difficult. Mm -hmm. And especially to get away from the negative uh, criticisms that people will say, no, you can't do it, that you can't do it. Right. How, how did you come about with that? Well, the main focus was, uh, we just got to keep pushing and just look forward. And uh, with the whole Sri Lankan Youth Organization, um, so many people told us that we couldn't. And uh, <laughs> there's always those. But then, uh, like, they saw what we were doing. And when they saw that, it was, it was kind of like everyone jumped on board. The main thing was a lot of people couldn't, didn't take us that serious in the beginning. But when we start to raise money and when we put ourselves out in that picture, then that's when people said, you know what, these people are here to stay. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people want to join because of that reason. So when it comes to the U.S., were there are restrictions of uh, getting this organization together from the U.S. government? Like, say, like, did you have to like register with them or? Do yeah. Something? Well, there's this whole process um, where we have to uh, you have to get a tax ID in order to become a nonprofit. That way, we could raise money, and so that takes a lot of money as well, and it takes time. So I mean, at first, the first year we weren't. Uh, Re we were registered, but it took us a while. But then once we started pitching the idea, people started saying, okay, you know what, this is a good organization. Let's go ahead and support them 100%. Mm -hmm. And how does the board manage? Is there like an annual basis where you select a chairperson or a chairman, or how does it go? Yeah, so our terms usually run up until December. So it's a one-year term uh, for the president, finance, VP, and uh, everyone else. So we try to interchange it. We keep it just like any other uh, event we have uh, elections uh, people vote they go up do their speeches so it's 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 not like a dictatorship everyone gets the opportunity so if you're willing to step up and you want to make a difference and become a leader we give you that opportunity for you to do that mm -hmm. so so far how many people are there in the committee so in the committee so far itself we have 10 people mm -hmm. and uh, in membership wise just in Southern California we have 70 plus Wow. And then also you have Northern California, which is the amazing part of Northern California, they're run by teenagers. So they're people that are younger than us, but they're stepping up to the plate because there was no one really at that age group that could, uh, older age group that could run it. So these kids who are in high school said, you know what, we like what you're doing. It's going to be a tough task, but we'll take it on. Mm -hmm. So they've jumped on board and uh, they're doing fine at the moment. They're doing perfectly fine at the moment, yes. Okay. And uh, speaking of music, art and culture, mm -hmm. Um, because uh, wherever we go across the world, we get to hear people say one thing we miss about Sri Lanka, it's the food and uh, it's yeah. the music. Yes. So we have a lot of uh, musicians who travel around the world for gigs and whatnot. And uh, how is it, uh, are, are they in touch with you? Do you g uh, get in touch with them or how, how does it go about? Yeah, I mean, coming from a family where my dad listens to Jyoti Pala all the time, mm -hmm. we love the Sri Lankan music. So. Uh, 
one thing that we're, this is a, we have multiple events coming up. So in August 16th um, in Santa Monica, we'll be having a fashion show, mm -hmm. which is just strictly Sri Lankan traditional clothes. It will be in the middle of an American uh, town, I guess you could say. So it's just a bunch of Sri Lankans. We have the stage, and we'll just create a crowd by showing them what Sri Lanka is all about. And another event that we're hoping to create by the end of this year, Um, they've been a huge crowd. They've kind of been our, our bond between the American and Sri Lankan culture. So we're trying to give what the people want. And a lot of the people... Okay. And coming back to, like, say, the education systems mm -hmm. in America, compared to the Sri Lanka, is it, is, do you get a big difference in it? There, I mean, it's tough. It's not easy. Um, but I think what I've learned is... What makes a Sri Lankan different than anyone else is when you tell them to do something, they'll do it 110%. But they need to know that they're Sri Lankan. So there's a lot of kids that go to America and they, they follow through with the schools, but they don't have that push to finish. And uh, if we let them know that this is where you come from, this is your people, and you need to do this for your country, people, a lot of people actually push through and graduate. We have so many kids now who are jumping board onto university, who are motivated to go on to further places to make themselves known in the world, mm -hmm. which I think is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Based on, uh, you said, the number of teenagers being involved, what is their area capacity of study that they're doing or uh, area of expertise that they're looking at? So the good thing about the United States is they really, they really like involvement. Um, it's not just the education, they, they, they respect the experience that you have. So these kids who are coming from high school, when they apply to college and they tell the colleges, you know what, I started this organization at such a young age, that's something they look for because they know that this person has the capability of doing something bigger in the world. Mm -hmm. So when, when students at a young age do this, it's, it's really sending out a, a loud message. Mm -hmm. And uh, based on uh, families and cultures, um, it's a little bit of a tough call when you live in a country like America where people will look at you in a different aspect, feeling that whole criticism of racism or right. uh, that you're an Asian and right. that you're pushed back. How do you come about or face forward from that? I mean, we just got to strive in perseverance and just, uh, I think the main thing is just you got to keep going and just always just look forward and just like an arrow, once you shoot it, you just go straight forward. Regardless of what people say, regardless of the wind, you just always shoot forward. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to teach them. You know, there are going to be people in this world who are going to tell you you can't do it. But I think the main importance is turning that energy to a positive and just using it. And uh, Sri Lankan youth, organiz youth organization, that's our main goal. And from, from the looks of it, it seems like it's working very well. Okay. And uh, coming back, like say, okay, you get uh, students coming into um, America. And mm -hmm. then of, obviously with the vast uh, improvement of technology and the uh, culture and everything, uh, Sri Lankans do intend to get carried away with that culture. So. Uh, you, do you identify those people and say, okay, like you're from Sri Lanka, why don't you get back into your culture and try to combine both cultures together? Um, I mean, a lot, yeah, a lot of things. I mean, we really can't tell people what to do in, you know, in the States. <laughs> people have their own mentality. But what we try to see is uh, I created a small video in, in YouTube, which was about the Morahena School, because I felt like people who donated, they give their money, but they don't really see where their money goes. So I started to put myself in their shoes, and I'm like, I would like to see where my money would go. So uh, during this time, I have a lot of free time here, <laughs> I decided to create a video that would kind of impact uh, the people. And it showed like the process. This, this video is going to show the process up until the grand opening. And um, like you're saying, there is a lot of people who do do that. And I'm hoping that through this organization, they'll be able to see us and be kind of step back into the realm of being Sri Lankan. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest challenge that you're facing right now as a Sri Lanka youth organization? Um, the biggest challenge is just, again, people just looking at us. And I think there's a lot of animosity. A lot of people get jealous, and they, they, they see it for the wrong reasons. And we just got to remind them that we're not doing this for us. We're doing this for the children. We're doing this for the future of Sri, Lankan, Sri Lanka. And you know, hopefully these, girl, these, these uh, children and girl, girls and boys will have a brighter future. Uh, growing up and if they want the opportunity to come to the United States and have a better education we'll, we're there we have your back you know even though we're a thousand miles away we haven't forgot about the motherland we haven't forgot about home mm -hmm. right uh, when we come back we're gonna speak about putting Sri Lanka in that map in around the world where people um, 
most of them know about what Ceylon is and what Sri Lanka is, but for some, they haven't even heard about Sri Lanka. So we'll talk about that after this music break. I can do what I like for the price of a smile. I gotta take it to ride. So I keep living cause it feels right. gets old and uh, we'll never stop listening to his music. I, I think most of them never stop listening to his father's music also. So nevertheless, Enrique Iglesias come to the final couple of minutes on the show and we have Chatra De Silva with us. Chatra, speaking of Sri Lanka, mm. now wherever we go in the world, we hear sometimes when, example, if I had to represent, I say from Sri Lanka, mm. most of the Asians know about it. But going across the Europe and the borders of America, uh, it's like, where? <laughs> uh, what part is that? And uh, how, do, you, do you hear that quite often or is it that uh, people now are aware of Sri Lanka? Um, I'll say it, it is tough. I mean, you have to have a lot of patience over there because people ask you, hey, where are you from? And I tell them Sri Lanka. Uh, most common answer I get is uh, from Africa. And I'm like, no, we're not from <laughs> Africa. And another one they'll say is mostly... Why Africa of oh, yeah, everything? We're, we're that, saying actually. that Sri Lanka. <laughs> Well, I think it's because there's a lot of African Americans there, and so okay. when they incorporate, they think, "Oh, okay, you got that's that's the only idea that they <laughs> okay. have." Okay. Another one is they say is that we're uh, Indian, 
And I like to just bring them back to reality and just say it's the same concept as being Chinese and Korean. You know, it's very similar people, but at the end of the day, they have their own culture, they have their own type of food, their own people, and that's how Sri Lankans are. We're our own type of people. And the amazing thing about Sri Lankans, we're diverse within ourselves, mm -hmm. and that's amazing. <laughs> okay. So, uh, based on the communities that has been involved, how do you, we understand, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and mm. uh, uh, the new social networks are the common ways on how you get in touch with them. But in terms of uh, being with the Sri Lankan community, what is your uh, marketing or promotional process there? I mean, with, with technology nowadays, we all have to take advantage of that. And like you said, the Instagram, the Facebook, uh, I'm sure a lot of you know about the YouTube Jehan, and he was able, fortunate enough to actually lend some of his time and his editing and his video to create a little video and awareness for SOYO. Um, he did this before our summer love party, um, so that actually helped us gain more money for the event. And I think what people were to understand was like, this was not for us, this is for the kids. And with the technologies, we were able to send that message through to all over the world. And um, we announced that we made this much money and we're doing this. And a week later, we get a call from the UK saying that they want to start a chapter there. So everything's just spreading so quick. Right. Yeah. So can we give the telephone number for people to get in touch? Yeah, and sure. That, uh, got a, this so, is the telephone number of the Sri Lanka Youth Organization. So it goes, uh, the area code of the states is 323-929-SOYO or 7596. Um, if you guys would like to contact us in email, we have soyusa at gmail.com. And for more information, info at soyo.org. And um, we have a website as well, which is soyo.org. You could go to that website, contact us. All the information is on there. Um, and we have future events, past events, pictures, anything that you could think of. Um, you visit the website, it's all there at your fingertips. Right. Thank you very much, Chatura De Silva. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining us on our show. And we wish you all the very best with the organization activities. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Right, Wednesday's edition. This is how we say goodbye. We hope your Wednesday will be super brilliant. Any particular message you want to say? Uh, be good? Well, be good and <laughs> be careful. Bye-bye. <laughs>